Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here. Monday, January the 23rd, 2023, and we're off and running on another week of crazy. I hope you guys won't mind here, but I'm going to finish today's show with a little bit of a rant. I've been just been reading some crazy stuff. I had to, I kind of got to get it off my chest. I hope you guys won't mind. Um, as always, though, we want to welcome you guys. First thing, welcome you guys to the show. Thank you for your support, for watching the videos and all the stuff you guys do every day to make the show keep truck keep on going. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Markets today. Well, let's take a look at these markets. Stock market had a decent day. Dow rallies up over 400 points. Stocks up across the board. Why? Well, earnings, pretty decent earnings. Salesforce, Intel, both coming out with decent earnings today, beating, in, beating what they're estimating. Uh, so companies continue to earn. And, of course, the market is celebrating this idea that it's somehow... The Fed going to only raise rates a quarter point is such great news for the market now. I guess they were really afraid the Fed might not do what they basically have been saying and telegraphing they're going to do for an entire year. Anyway, stock's up on not a lot of real news, but this market really wants to rally. There's a ton, a ton of money sitting on the sidelines. The market's looking for any reason it possibly can to gain. Today is one of those days. Bonds today down small, the 10-year sitting at 3.52%, up 4 basis points today. The 2-year at 4.23%, up 5 basis points. So yields going back up a little bit now, reversing the big trend. Still shockingly low to me. I mean, you have an overnight rate here. The 2-year rate, the 10-year rate is significantly lower than the overnight rate. Three-month rates, one-year rates higher. It's just that the whole inversion is so weird to me. I cannot understand why anybody would be interested in a 10-year bond when you can get 70 basis points higher and only have to commit your money for two years unless they really believed rates were going down from here, which I don't believe. Anyway, bond markets just as crazy as the rest of the markets. The dollar today... Still basically flat, nothing much happening with the dollar, sitting 102.06 on the index, just, just sitting there waiting. Mar metals today, mixed day for metals. Gold had a nice, eh, decent day today, up $4.70 last I saw, $1,932. I think gold 2000 is a real possibility coming soon. Silver down 49 cents today, $23. 42 cents per ounce. I thought, I kind of thought, so I, I still think silver wants to rally. Um, I think silver $25 is probably likely you're going to see soon. I, my, metals, as much as stocks, have been raring to go, wanting to rally. I think the dollar kind of stagnating is slowing the rally a little bit, but as the dollar continues to move down, metals are going to continue to move up. Oil today up very small, up three cents for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate, sitting at $81.67 per barrel. Not much happening in the oil market today. I think that, you know, oil has been just so crazy. It's, and again, it's been driven by the day to day. There's no real trend. Stocks, bonds, and in really in anything except maybe metals trending up. Um, but oil has just been the weirdest because it's just totally been driven on speculation, not real data of demand rising. Maybe demand will rise. Not any real data, demand falling, supply falling, speculation. So oil's just been very, very weird. If you're investing in oil, if you're in the oil markets, just be very cautious. I'm not saying don't buy them. I'm not saying don't own them. I'm not saying get out if you own them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying keep an eye on those because there's going to be some volatility there. Bitcoin today up again, $555, 22969 last time I saw. Amazing rally on Bitcoin, almost up $7,000 from where it was sitting just a very, very short time ago. Bitcoin defying the world, too, because I was reading today in the Wall Street Journal here about this bankruptcy at Genesis which was a 
crypto lender. And all the news basically that I've been seeing in crypto has not been real positive news. Bitcoin's still going, going, going anyway. And what can I tell you? It's a crazy world, so crazy things are going to happen, right? <laughs> As we do every week. At the beginning of the week, we'll give you guys a little bit of an idea of what you can expect this week as far as data, stuff reports that you're going to be getting that are going to come out that may move these markets. Today, not much happening data-wise today on Monday, but we will get leading indicators. I have not seen that come across yet. We're going to get big earnings. If you've seen Intel, Salesforce coming out with good earnings. Um, tomorrow is another Tuesday, another big earnings day. you got Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft. Raytheon, the big defense contractor, Texas Instruments, you got Verizon, so you got companies across a lot of different industries that are going to be reporting tomorrow. We'll see how those earnings make the market react. Wednesday, another, it's not much happening Wednesday, you're going to get the mortgage bankers number, which I'm guessing is going to come down. They're expecting it to be down. You're going to get uh, more earnings coming on Wednesday as well. You'll get Tesla, IBM, Boeing, AT&T, manufacturing, get an idea of where we're looking at, what we're looking at as far as that sector of the economy. Thursday starts the party. GDP numbers coming. Uh, the report I read in the journal said they're expecting GDP to have risen 2.8% in the fourth quarter. GDP now, Atlanta Tracker says 3.5% in the fourth quarter. I think that that kind of gives them a lot of room there, doesn't it? But uh, positive GDP number probably coming on Thursday. We'll probably get an idea that day as well. If we're going to have positive GDP growth for the year. I think we will. Um, it's just more crazy, guys. This is, this is a recession. It's the craziest recession I've ever seen. I'll tell you that. Uh, also on Thursday... <clears throat> We'll get initial jobless claims, which was the big shocker last week. Coming in, they're expecting 225, coming in at 190,000. 190, this week, they've lowered their estimate. They're expecting 199,000. We'll see where it comes in on Thursday. Also on Thursday, you'll get new home sales, which are expected to be down. Friday, Consumer Day, we'll get some interesting data on consumers, personal spending, personal income as well as the uh, University of Michigan Consumer Index, which is expected to be basically flat. Uh, we'll see what they said that, according to these estimates in today's journal, personal spending is supposed to have come down in that market. You remember the market reacting to that from December's numbers. And of course, uh, personal income is expected to have risen and we've been seeing and hearing a lot about that with the jobs market. So I think the jobless claims on Thursday will give us a much better idea of what we'll see as far as uh, you know, income gains for consumers on Friday. News you guys need to finish up this week, to start this week. It's, just, it's, it's only Monday and it seems like it's been a long week already. But check out some of this stuff I've been looking Interesting stuff I want to bring you guys today. I was reading today that 63% of Americans surveyed support a stimulus check to offset inflation. 63% of Americans. It's interesting to me that 63% of Americans was also the number they said are now living paycheck to paycheck. So when you live in paycheck to paycheck, any sort of extra income is welcome. <clears throat> so that's not a surprise to see it. It's just a sad idea that people now, hoping the government's going to come to their rescue in some way, if they actually decided or even talked about sending an additional stimulus check, I mean, can you think of a way or something that would be more inflationary, that would kick inflation right back into gear? It's just really sad that the state of the American consumer, the middle class, us guys, right, the working class, is such that 63%, so if you take the top 10% out of that, I don't know what percentage of the survey they were, but, you know, it's just sad that that's the number that feel like they need a handout. Um, all symbol, all sim signals right now pointing to a slowdown in the rate hikes. 
They're now going to start raising, instead of the three quarters, they've been raised, that was kind of the number last year. They raised a half in December. Now the markets are expecting them to start raising by quarter point increments. This is not a surprise to anybody. The Fed's been telegraphing this for pretty much a year or so, maybe not quite a year, but they've been telegraphing this the entire time. They know what their target is. We're probably going to see three quarter point increases sometime this year. That'll get us above their 5% target rate. This is not a big surprise. We've already known all of this. This is a typical number. When a Fed raises rates, typically quarter point is the number. When they get to halves and three quarters, that's kind of an extraordinary move. You don't see the Fed do very often. They don't want to spook and rattle the markets. That's not their objective, guys. So, you know, this is just a, what do they call it, a nothing burger? Um, but the market celebrating this news like it's somehow new. It's somehow something that the market does not priced in already. It's just silly, man. This <laughs> irrational thoughts, rumor hope in a negative way. This is what's driving this market right now. It's just silly, guys. So now, as the dollar coming down 102.06 today on the, on the index, the euro has been climbing. You guys might remember back sometime, I think it was during the summer, when I told you guys I was going to go buy myself a couple thousand dollars in euros, which I did, when the euro was at parity with the dollar. Well, now the euro is almost back up to 109. Uh, I think that when it gets to 110 on the dollar, we'll see. I don't want to let my greed take the, get the best of me. And I did say I was going to sell when it got to 110. That's an easy 10% gain. Not a lot of risk involved there. Um, I hope some of you listeners did that. Not to, and I warned everybody, you know, don't do it with very much money. If you're going to take a shot, just, you know, small, small, small. Um, but anyway, it's almost time to cash out of that one, so it's kind of cool. And closing today, I got to have a little bit of a rant about the state of our politics and our government in this friggin' country, guys. Now, I warn you and I, beforehand that the language might get a little spicy here, because as you guys know, I am no fan of government. I am no fan of politics. I am no fan of either party. They're both just so full of crap and have no idea what the average American is going through and truthfully could care less. There may be a few in there that do, especially some of the newer ones, you know, the idealists who are just getting started haven't been jaded or corrupted yet. But uh, I've never seen, I can't even believe that the state of our government is what it is. And I just got to talk about this Santos guy from New York. Now, I'm sure most of you guys have heard this story and already have an opinion, but I just got to laugh my ass off here for a second about the ridiculousness of this story. So here's a guy, George Santos, and now they're already actually saying they're not even sure if that's his real name, okay? who's the newly elected congressman from Long Island in New York City. Uh, typical close district, but typically leans Democrat or Republican elected. This is a guy who literally invented a character to run for Congress and then portrayed that character during the campaign. This is a guy who said he was... Okay, let me figure out. Let's start at the beginning. Said he graduated from Harvard. Didn't. Said he worked as Goldman Sachs. Didn't. Said his mother was in the South Tower of, uh, on 9-11. Wasn't. Said his grandparents escaped from Ukraine and escaped the Holocaust. Not even Jewish. This was a guy who basically went out and told everybody exactly what they wanted to hear. All of it, just complete, absolute, made-up bullshit. It's, I, it's an embarrassment to this country that the voters could be so ill-informed, so lame, so not knowing of anything, 
that they voted for this guy. Shame on the voters for not doing their due diligence at all. Voting tribally, I'm guessing, with a lot of Democrats mixed in, Jewish voters, you know, the sympathy vote for the Holocaust surviving grandson, um, and just the madness of it all. And the people of New York aren't recalling him. I, don't, I haven't heard anything about that. Congress is assigning him committees to be sitting on. And this is a guy who's an absolute and total complete fraud. I don't know exactly what it says to you guys about the state of our politics, but they say before tragedy usually comes farce. And I think that this qualifies as farce. Guys, forget this tribal bullshit, red team, blue team, conservative, liberal, all these labels they want to put on everybody. We all know the difference between right and wrong. Now let's start living, living right, talking right, doing right, and especially voting right. And stop with all the nonsense. Stop with t spreading nonsense because it might help someone in a political party get elected. We got a fraud sitting in the Congress who now basically has been exposed as a com just every single thing about this guy is fabricated. What's next, man? Clowns? They put them all, they give them all red noses? I mean, it's, this is America, the greatest country on the face of the earth ever. Let's start all behaving like it, right? Anyway, guys, that's it for today. We're back tomorrow. Crazy days, crazy times, crazy world. But I'll be here to bring it to you guys. I promise no more missed days, guys. I'm here every day after this market closes. We appreciate your support. Back again tomorrow at the close. Until we talk then, guys. Take care.